I bought a custom built one of a kind Xbox for $400 and in this video we're going to unbox it, test it out, tear it down and see if it's any good. So I got this bubble wrap off and man we got this fluorescent orange paint job here on the bottom. Now flipping to the top we got, ooh yeah, we got this transparent shell here with the giant Xbox logo in the middle which looks very cool. Let's go ahead and clear everything off the table and take a closer look. We got a fluorescent orange here, fluorescent green. I actually like it, it's kind of a, a cool chaos combination right here. And we of course have our clear case, we have our power, our eject, our four controller ports. Flipping to the bottom though, we can see we do have some problems with the paint. We've got this giant crack right here. And now of course you can see it's been open because they had to mod it and we have these holes here. Um, but we also have some more paint chipping and cracking kind of underneath the case right there. Honestly, it's not too bad and it kind of just <laughs> adds to the aesthetic a little bit, I guess. Now flipping to the back, we also have our fluorescent orange and again, some more just a uh, paint cracking here. Now, of course, the inside we have this kind of greenish, uh, fluorescent greenish case here and it doesn't, I'm not sure if that's painted or not or if that's just a, a, a green metal shell they found somewhere. I would assume it's painted, but I don't know. We'll take a closer look later. Now flip it to the top where you can see all the action. This thing, I'm not gonna lie, this thing is looks awesome. We got our disk drive over here. We even have like you can see inside of the disk drive, we have our little magnetic wheel on top suspended by this clear plastic piece that holds it over the where the disc goes. You've got your cool Xbox logo here, which is actually, that looks like an Xbox One, Xbox Series X logo. Like a, it's a newer type of logo, which I think looks cool here in this case. We also have our custom cables here that are in like the braided cable. Um, it goes to your hard drive. I think we have a one terabyte. Yeah, we have a one terabyte SSD in here. So we should be able to put on every Xbox game ever on this thing if you wanted to. We also have these cool like, orange and green cables in here. I don't know, it, it just looks cool. There's obviously some LEDs as well, uh, so it should light up when we turn it on. But yeah, let's go ahead and plug this bad boy in and see what it does. I got this console plugged in and I will add that I'm not sure if there's any other software or hardware mods on this console because I bought this thing ages ago and the eBay listing is expired so I can't see any of the details about what I bought. So we're kind of flying blind here, which I enjoy. I think it's a little more, more fun that way. But let's go ahead and turn this bad boy on and see what it does. Are you interested in a free game like Wii Sports or even a Texas Load Enhanced and Hall sticker sheet? Well, if you are, it's your lucky day. Check out my link down below to whatnot and get a $15 credit if you sign up today. It's 100% free, no tax, no shipping. Anything under $15 will be 100% free. And I only have this stack of games, so once these are gone, they're gone. So go check them out right now before they're sold out. All right, so we get a video from the front. Three, two, one. Turn it on. Ooh, okay. Okay. Oh, oh, that's that's pretty nice. We'll have to, we'll have to check this thing out in the dark later. But we, of course, have our power button here in the front, eject button. Let's just see what the eject button does, make sure that works, maybe. Okay, so the eject button just does nothing, I guess. Power button works, maybe so it turns on and off, but the eject button, yeah, just doesn't do anything. Well, we'll try to figure out the disk drive later, but we are booted up now into the XBMC, which is a open source open source software on the Xbox, the OG Xbox. I'm not no expert by any means on OG Xbox modding, so we're gonna kind of figure this out on our own and just to kind of explore through here. <laughs> Is it, why is that the, the default picture there? Okay, whatever. We got programs, videos, music, pictures, and weather. Weather, why? Okay, I, that's kind of cool, I guess, but let's go ahead and check out our programs first. See what we can launch here. We got apps, emulators, Xbox games, add source. Let's go with the apps first and see what's on here. We got Chimp Loader. I don't know what that is. DVD to Xbox. I'm assuming that's either so you can play DVDs on your Xbox or maybe burn DVDs to your Xbox. I don't know. Uh, okay, okay, emulators, what we got on here? We've got, ooh, okay, Atari, ooh, ooh, okay, I see, it looks like we got a little bit of everything. I don't know, let's start by booting up the PlayStation 1 emulator and see if that's got anything on it. Okay, we'll go to Spyro the Dragon here, boot that up and see how it plays. Oh, well, uh, this is not running very well. I, <laughs> when I first booted it up, ooh, ooh, that's not good. Oh, man, what is this, like, <laughs> five frames per second? This is awful. All right, I, I guess that's not too terribly surprising since we're on OG Xbox hardware trying to play a game that was just from a few years before this thing came out. So uh, I'm not surprised it's being throttled this hard. Maybe there's some settings you can play with to make this run better, but I mean, actually the cutscene runs runs just fine. But let's get back into some gameplay here and see what it looks like. Yeah, I mean that, oh man, that's not ideal. I, I, it's getting a little better, maybe. I mean, it's it's playable. Kind of. I don't know, man. It's just, uh, regardless, it's funny to me when I play a PlayStation game with an Xbox controller, it just feels wrong, but it also feels right at the same time. Now let's go ahead back to the home menu here. I wonder if there's a way to like boot up a, a pop-up menu here. Maybe not. I'll probably just have to reset it. Let's keep scrolling through the settings here and I'm going to see if I can figure out a setting to uh, get this thing to open up. Fan speed override. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
keep this bad boy real, real cool, but not quiet. So I scrolled through pretty much every menu setting I could find to see if I could configure the eject button or do something with the eject button to get this thing to open, but I couldn't find anything. The one thing I did find here, which was odd, is under dashboard, you can kind of configure a custom path here. And we have our DVD drive is, now it says open. Earlier it said busy. So I don't know what's going on there, why it says open versus busy, but uh, that might be part of our problem. But since I can't get it open, we're gonna go ahead and go to our last resort, which is taking a paperclip and pushing it in this little pinhole right here. So we should be able to open up the disk drive manually. All right, disk drive is coming out. And I'm just taking a closer look here. I'm trying to see if there's anything missing and no, it looks like we got our band here intact. It is got the full action right here. I don't know. Um, it's just, it doesn't even try to open. Let's go ahead and put a disk in and manually, sl manually slide it back in and see what happens. And we'll give it a nice clank right there. Okay, oh, oh, there we go. Okay, making progress. Let's go ahead and see if it reads the game now. All right, yes, yeah, so the game is booting up. It just auto-booted, which is a great sign. So the disk drive does work. It just doesn't open on its own, which is very interesting. Right. We'll dive into that later. Hold on, wait, what? All right, well, the game was booting up and was I was playing for like five minutes, and then it said there's a problem with your disk you're using. Maybe damage, damage or dirty. Well, I'm going to chalk it up to a bad disk because I'm playing some NASCAR 05 right now. I played a whole race and it didn't have any issues at all. Well, anyways, now that we got the disk drive issues partially sorted out, let's go ahead and try to connect to the internet and see what we can do with that. I got my Ethernet cable plugged in. Got a long boy right here. Let's go ahead and go to network. And I think under here, auto detection. Yeah, let's try this and see what it does. Okay, so the internet connection is definitely working. You can see when I plug it in, it'll immediately give me an IP address right there under system info. There it is, and then it pops up with a little, little scroll bar on the bottom where it tells me about updates for XBMC for Xbox. Now, I can't figure out how to use this for anything useful. Uh, I go to weather and it's not up. I, I'm assuming this whole weather interface has been taken down for ages and probably just doesn't work anymore. I'm not really sure what other functionality you can use the internet for on an OG Xbox right now. Uh, maybe there's some games you can still use some, some fan-made servers to play Halo. I honestly have no idea. But let's go ahead and go back to these uh, programs over here and get back to the emulators and Xbox games and kind of dive into what else we can do here. So we tried to play a PlayStation 1 game and obviously that did not work out very well. I'm going to try an N64 game. I feel like that should be able to run without an issue, I would think, on an OG Xbox. But let's go ahead and boot up the N64 emulator and see if we got anything on here. So we're just going to go with the classic here of Super Smash Bros. Uh, there's a, What is a surreal setup? We've got, okay, it looks like it's just settings. I'm going to leave those all at default, try to boot it up. Uh, we'll boot it up with Ultra HLE and just see what happens. All right, well, uh, Super Smash Bros. just stopped loading, which is great. Uh, let me go ahead and try to, I guess, restart the console again. Great, well, I used a different setting this time and it still froze as it was booting. Awesome, we'll try one more time. So I finally got the game booted up with a, uh, with a different setting here and we're in gameplay. It's actually running pretty well. It froze briefly for like one millisecond earlier, but other than that, it's running okay. I, I can't remember the controls for Smash Bros in the N64, so I'm getting destroyed right now. So let's go ahead and go back to the main menu again and check out some of the other emulators and games. Oh my gosh. Now seeing the N64 games work, I would assume that anything else on here works fine. Game Boy Color, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Neo Geo Pocket, NES, all that stuff should work without an issue. Now booting up the Xbox games, it looks like we have 292 games loaded up, which is about a third of the Xbox library, I believe. And I love how they show the Xbox game cases so you can kind of get like this nice angle so you can see the side. Uh, the side art too as well, like the side art is not the right word. The binder, I, I don't know. Well, let's boot up Burnout 3 Takedown, that's a classic. Why is this not loading? It's an Xbox, Xbox game. All right, let's turn it off again, turn it back on, and boot up a different game, I guess. I decided to boot up Anwar Street Ball since I saw that earlier and decided it might be fun to play, but I've been playing for like 10 or 15 minutes without an issue. I'm not sure why Burnout 3 wasn't working, but in my experience, it's just kind of what happens with a modded console. You run into issues here and there, and it's just kind of what you... As, as cool as a modded console is, it's just kind of what you got to deal with um, sometimes. So it is what it is. But let me know down below if you got any details on what you think might be going on with this console. But anyways, console's working fine so far for the most part. Xbox games, emulators, disk drive works if you open it up manually. But the next thing I want to do is show you this console closer up and in, in the dark and just see how it how it illuminates the night here. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but let's, let's do it. So I have the lights turned down and you can see this thing in all its glory and I, I really like it. I mean, it's got a lot of chaotic energy with the, the wild colors, the, the wires everywhere, but I think it just kind of fits the aesthetic they are going for with this console. I mean, you got these wires just kind of strewn everywhere, but it looks cool. You've even got the LEDs that are exposed and you can see them, but I, I think it works here because that's just kind of the vibe of this console is like clear, transparent. You can see everything everywhere. And it's just a kind of brings you back to the 2000s when everything was translucent or maybe, maybe even the, the late nineties, but uh, you know, I think it just looks cool with your LEDs around the hard drive bay here. Now over here, you got 
you know, a strip of LED lights around the outside here. They're all purple. I think they're purple and it kind of, you know, the purple kind of vibes well with the orange and green and everything. But yeah, I mean, I'm pretty pleased with it so far. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy up though and see what it looks like on the inside. So here on the bottom of the console, we'll start by taking the rubber feet off, which I already have off here. We'll go against Microsoft's advice of not opening this console and we'll go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and open it anyway. And we got six screws, so one, two, three, four, five, six, already exposed for us. So let's take them out. Now I will say that typically when I take apart an OG Xbox these days, I would definitely use a heat gun to get these uh, these stickers right here up, and so you can peel them back and then take the screw out and then put them put the sticker back over it, so you don't make these giant gaping holes here. Not a big deal because it's on the bottom of the console, but I think it just looks a little bit cleaner, especially when you're doing a, a cool mod like this. Let's go ahead and uh, flip this bad boy over and take the top cover off now. There it goes. All right, cool. We got this clear modded case here. I think they called it a ghost mod. A uh, funny name for it. I like that though. Now of course we have our cool custom little braided cable here which is strapped in place. I like that. It looks nice. We've got these cool little orange and, and green cables. I don't know why I like those so much but they just feel high quality premium. I don't know man. Um, and the best part about this thing, I not the best part but a cool part about it is the entire interior of the case is painted so that you get the full effect. It's not like it's painted green and orange on the outside and the inside is still like this, the, the bare metal. Uh, so that's a nice little touch there. And you can see closer up here now that we have a one terabyte Barracuda drive from Seagate. But let's keep taking it apart and see what it looks like down on the motherboard. Now actually before I do that, I guess I should talk about these LEDs here. And I'm, I'm looking closer here, trying to figure out where they're splicing into, where, they get, where they're getting power. So we got our wires coming here from both sides of the LEDs. They splice into this little uh, Molex connector here. I guess it's Molex, I'm not sure actually. But uh, it goes into these green and orange wires here which seem to splice into the back of this, this cable here that goes in the back of the hard drive. I'm assuming just pulling power from this, the pins there that provide power. And uh, yeah, clever solution. It looks nicely integrated, but let's keep going now. I think I just found our issue with the, with the, uh, the disk drive. You see that cable right there? That thing is partially unplugged. I got that all the, all the way plugged back in now. Uh, before I take this apart any further, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this bad boy back on and see if that fixes our, our, our disk drive. You gotta be kidding me. I mean, like, I'm glad it was an easy fix, but all that playing around with it earlier and all, it, all I had to do was plug that cable in a little further. But hey, at least it's working now. Uh, let's keep taking this thing apart and get down to the motherboard now. And taking the disk drive out now, I can see why that cable came unplugged because it's a, it's a really short cable. So if you move it around at all, it comes unplugged. So yeah, looking over this motherboard, I don't see any signs of any kind of hardware modification, no mod chips, anything of that nature. Of course, we do have our braided cable additions here, which I think look kind of nice and just add to the aesthetic. Uh, we do have our clock capacitor cut out as well, which is good to see because that thing would be leaking all over the board by now. Uh, but guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know down below what you think about this console. Honestly, overall, I'll probably give this like an eight out of 10 because I, I just really like the aesthetic. Uh, it's kind of beat up and stuff, but it is a used console. It wasn't built just for me. But yeah, let me know down below what you guys think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.